Um, so I sort of inherited this uh, amplifier and I really don't know anything about it. So um, I went ahead and opened it up. I'll show some pictures here. It's a standard little Mimic uh, chip and uh, what I was curious about was the pinout of the connector on it. Uh, looks like it needs, it's an 8 volt regulator so it looks like it needs at least 10 volts going in. Um, and it looks like a standard standard amplifier, so nothing strange going on, so we can test it. And I've soldered on a couple uh, wires here, and uh, I'll drive it with more than 10 volts, and we will do some testing. So I haven't tested an amplifier for a while, so let me, let me show that. I don't think I've tested an amplifier on my new VNA once I got it, so uh, that'll be fun. Let's, uh, let's get that set up. So, um, before you test an amplifier, there's a couple things you need to worry about. One is the output power of the amplifier blowing up your machine, and one is the output power of the machine blowing up your amplifiers. So you need to have um, a small amount of power going into the amplifier, and it's going to output a lot of power. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a, uh, a attenuator on the output of the, um, of the amplifier. So I'm going to have a 20 dB, 20 dB attenuator on the output of the amplifier. Uh, amplifiers like this hardly ever put out more than plus 20 dBm, and so this will cut it down to a maximum of 0 dBm, which, which I'm happy with. I'm also going to drive the amplifier with only minus 20 dBm. Now, this uh, VNA has the capability of, of, up, of lowering the amount of output power it has, but a lot of VNAs are fixed, like the Nano VNA is fixed, so if you need less power going in, you're going to have to put attenuator on the input as well. So you have to have a pin attenuator on the output to, to limit the power, and you have to have a attenuator on the input to limit the power. Um, so um, because we're going to be using an attenuator in series, we're going to measure the, the S21 parameter of this amplifier, um, we have to calibrate through the 20 dB attenuator because that's going to be in circuit. And so we will we will do our through calculation with with a 20 dB pad in line. Okay, so uh, let me hook this up. All right, so we need to do a couple things here first. Okay, the attenuator is in line. I'm going to go to frequency. We're at uh, 0.3 to 1.3 gigahertz. I'm going to hit the power button and it says the level. So I can, I can change the level that the machine outputs. There's a step attenuator inside the machine. So I'm going to set it to uh, minus 20 dBm. And then uh, we will need to calibrate. We're going to do a uh, transmission measurement. Uh, we're going to do a cal. And we're going to do a response. And we're going to measure the response. It calibrates it and it gives us, uh, let's see, we want to do a scale of 10 dB per and a reference position. There we go. All right, so we have a nice straight line now and uh, we can insert our amplifier. So here we have the amplifier. Here's the output of the VNA. It's going to go through the amplifier. It's going to come out the other side. There's a 20 dB pad here, and then it's go in, into the DNA. So we're all set to go. Now we just have to hook up some power, and I'm going to be running this at 11 volts. Uh, so I'm going to hook up the uh, hook up the power, and then we will take a look at our result. All right. So the amplifier is. Uh, giving us about 10 dB of gain. And so let's zoom in on that. It's obviously not working here at lower frequencies. Let's put a marker here. It's definitely not working below 500 megahertz. It's kind of bad there. Uh, but let's zoom in on this. So we're going to hit our scale factor. We want to have a good scale factor. Let's do a 5 dB per. And here you see it's coming up to about 10 dB. Let's go to 2 dB per per division and we've gone off scale but we can lower the whole thing down by setting the reference position and dialing it that dialing it down so now uh, 0 dB is here at the very very bottom of the screen so it's two four six eight ten and you can see it's very very wiggly so this is not a great amplifier design uh, not a very good amplifier design at all 
let's turn the marker on and again 10 db yeah 550 megahertz and up kind of thing and then it's certainly about uh plus and minus one db i guess that's not terrible but it is a bit bumpy um, so about plus and minus a db and about 10 db um 500 megahertz and up and 11 volts so now we know everything we need to know about the amplifier um, all right, we can also take a look at the S21 per or the S11 parameter. Uh, might as well. Are we okay to do that in this situation? I'm pretty sure we are. So let's go here to measurement two, and we will hit uh, reflection, and this is the S11. And we're getting about uh, not a very good match. Not a very good match at all. Let's uh, let's do a Smith chart. Yeah, not very good at all. The uh, it's definitely not matched very well. And we can do a VS. Uh, let's see here, SWR just for fun. Yeah, we're never better than two to one. Uh, so yeah, not a great uh, not a great amplifier design. It was probably uh, designed expecting a attenuator or what you would call a pad in front of the amplifier uh, that would help this out. So anyway, there you go. Uh, measured an amplifier, S21, S11. Um, now I uh, put it in my box and forget about it because it's not, it's not something I really need and it's not great. Um, so I'm not sure what to do with it.